Hi, this is JP, but in the culinary lighting world, they call me Bob P or Master P. Today on the Slant Lens, we're going to take a look at how to light this bottle using only things that we find in the kitchen. Lighting tips too hot to handle. Let's get started and see what we can do. I work with a lot of students who are trying to learn how to light, and they all go, it's been quarantine, we have nothing to light with. So I'm going to show you how to light this bottle with nothing but the things I'm going to find in this kitchen. The very first thing I did was I hung blankets out the window, killed all the light in the room, so I now have complete control of the light in this room. I turned all the lights off except for these two lights in the room. I'm going to use them as my key lights. I'm going to kill this one, so I have one single light. Now I can't just throw this bottle on the table anywhere I want. I've got to put this bottle in the right place to make this a correct key light for it. So if I move this up and back, I'll find a nice place for it to, to live. I want it to be above, light the cap, give me a little bit of fall off below, possibly a little small shadow on the bottom, and that's going to be my key light. I now want a reflection. And the first thing that comes to mind is a cookie sheet. So I'm going to take my cookie sheet, and I'm going to set my bottle in here. In the background, I've got that pot, and I've got everything going on. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to use this other cookie sheet, because it has kind of, it's just, textured and beat up and looking kind of cool, I'm going to put this behind as my backdrop. Now you notice as I tilt this forward, I can make that backdrop darker. If I tilt it back, I start to get an angle of incident off from my key light and starts to give me some kind of depth on the background. Nothing works to hold a cookie sheet background up as well as sugar. Now I can tilt that back a little bit or tilt it up. I'm going to just give us a little bit of definition back there. It looks fabulous. Let's focus our camera. There's our first setup. But before we go any further, we've got a label on the back of this bottle. I don't want that to show through because I'm going to try to shine a light through this. So I'm going to take and I'm going to peel this label off so I don't see any lettering behind the bottle. I just want a clean, clean bottle. But when I do that, I got all kinds of glue on here that's also, it's also going to mess up my look in the background. The best way to take glue off is Bestine, but I'm in the kitchen. I don't have any Bestine. The next best thing is vegetable oil. So I'm going to rub this down really well. I'm going to get rid of all that glue on the back, and that way I'll have a clean back. It will not show through. It'll give me a beautiful glowing light from behind. That worked fabulously. All that sticky stuff is absolutely gone. So now let's start putting some light on this bottle. I'm going to use a couple of flashlights. Before I put my flashlights down, let's create a little bit of pool of water in the bottom, give us a little reflection. This doesn't have to be very much, I just want to have a little bit of reflection, so enough to cover the whole surface of the tray. I'll just keep playing there until we fill it all up. Now I'm going to do a flashlight uh, from behind. If I put that right from behind, holy cow! That is way too bright. So I'm going to take and use some parchment paper. I'm sure my wife will not mind if I use her cooking scissors, cut off a piece of parchment paper. This is going to knock that light down by at least a stop. So I'll just pull that all the way around like that. Give myself a little ring of tape around it. Hold it in place, there we go. All right, if I put that back here, it's in the water, it's gonna be right on the floor, it's gonna create a reflection on the ground. So I'm gonna to go to my all-time favorite thing to use in the kitchen, I'm gonna to go to pastry nozzles. Just give us a flat surface to put that on. Oh, much, much better, much better. That's still a little too bright. I can bring my entire exposure down all right, that's looking pretty good, but you know what? I'm going to get this bottle not so close to that light, so the light will spread out a little more and just look a little nicer on the back there. Now I can do one of a couple of things here. I've got a nice light on the background. I've got a reflection happening in the water in the foreground. You see that there? A little reflection up front. That's nice. Um, I could add this light back. But you know, when I do that, it lights the entire scene, and I don't know if I like that that much. So I'm going to keep that off. And I'm going to add another light up front here. Holy cow, that is way too much. So, back to the pastry nozzles. And I'm going to 
take that and I'm gonna find a little spot right there. So what do I do? What do I always do? I'm gonna put a little bit of parchment paper on it. I don't love what it's doing to my background back there. First off, it's showing me a reflection of my flashlight and it's going into the background. So I'm gonna use a flag. And the brown sugar container is gonna be my flag. A bit of light reflecting off on the side there. I'm gonna kill that off the background with that uh, sugar. I've got a little bit of a highlight there I don't love. I've got a little reflection on that uh, bottle right there coming off this flashlight and I don't love it. So in order to get rid of it, I'm gonna put something very small underneath the back of the bottle and tilt it forward. Throw that reflection up into the curve of the bottle and disappear. So I'm gonna put a knife from underneath and just slowly tilt the bottle towards the camera until it gets to a place where that reflection that's on the front of the bottle gets pushed up into the top of the bottle there. So I got a little bit of that, that reflection starting to happen in the bottom. Maybe I'll pull this out a little bit, see if I can split the two here so I don't have to clean that up in the type as much. All right, so now we've got everything set up here. Got a pretty decent light on the, uh, on the bottle. I could maybe use, I, let's take a look here. If I took my parchment, would it do anything to bounce a little bit of light in on the other side? And I'll turn on my flashlight. All right, I like that rim from behind a lot. That's very nice. Uh, if I can keep this close, I can get a pretty good size, nice rim light on the side of it there. It gives us some definition. I gotta figure out a way to hold this thing up. All right, so I've got a paper towel holder here and I've got a hanger. I absolutely love this stuff because it's just, it's a great diffuser. It just gives you a beautiful soft light. So I'll tape that on my hanger back here. I now need ice. So where am I gonna get ice in my kitchen? Actually not in my kitchen, but in the uh, laundry room right out here, I've got a solution. A diaper. In diapers, there's a silicone stuff. And if you get them really nice and wet, tear them open, that silicone stuff looks just like ice chunks, chips. So let's wet this up. Uh, this isn't through the whole diaper, but it's in the front, kind of strategically placed in the front of the diaper to soak up moisture. So now we want condensation on our bottle. The easiest thing is to put this bottle in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes, and that will give us a beautiful condensation when we bring it out into the room air. If you don't have time for that, a very easy, fast way is here in the kitchen, and that is a spritzer bottle full of 50% carol syrup and 50% water. That carol syrup is going to beat up, and it's going to stick there, and it'll stay there forever. All right, so I'm gonna spritz our bottle here. Now we need ice down there, and that ice is kind of disappearing into my, I'm gonna have to get as much of it as I can out of this diaper. I want all the ice I, this diaper has to yield. There we go, we'd have to shoot fast, that's for sure. So there you have it from Bob P or Master Lighting P here in the Master Lighting Kitchen. Lighting this bottle with only the things you find in your kitchen. Imagine what you could do if you could use your garage too. It's about putting the light where it needs to be in order to light your subject matter. It's not about how expensive your lights are, it's about understanding where to put your lights. So check out our other Laws of Light series. It'll help you understand where to put the lights in order to make a fabulous looking finished product shot or a great looking portrait. If you've got any great DIY lighting solutions you've come up with, send us a BTS shot. We would love to see us. Make sure you tag the Slanted Lens, hashtag the Slanted Lens, because we want to be able to see it. We want to be able to connect with you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment below on something that you found interesting. Links and things like that would be very helpful to be able to find DIY lighting solutions for people who are lighting inside, don't have a lot of lighting equipment. So keep those cameras rolling. Subscribe. Don't leave without subscribing. And keep on clicking. This is the SKB2217. This bad boy will carry all my Westcott strobe equipment. Five FJ400 lithium batteries, four FJ400 strobe heads, FJX2 trigger, speed ring, seven inch grid, gel insert, seven inch reflectors, two chargers. So there's what I have in my SKB2217 strobe case. So don't get skunked out there. Make sure you've got the right equipment with you. Let's go shoot something.